Most signals need a background that makes sense. If I told you my favorite basketball player was number 33, and I showed you a picture of this, you'd have no idea who I was talking about. But if that number 33 was on a green jersey outlined in white, you might get that I was talking about Larry Bird. Or if 33 was on a gold jersey outlined in purple, you would know that I was talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But I don't study basketball players, I study ants. And this is a story about my research on the trap jaw ant, Madonna Macus Brunais. When ants touch each other with their antennae, they're sensing chemicals that coat their entire body. These chemicals are collectively called the ant's cuticular hydrocarbon profile, which is a mixture of long-chain waxes that occur in different abundances on the surface of an ant. When a worker encounters a queen, she is sensing that queen's chemical profile, and in response, she acts submissive by adopting a crouching posture and retracting her antennae. I'll show you what this submissive worker response looks like in a colony. What these workers are responding to when they're being submissive to a queen is their chemical profile. The queen's profile differs from that of a worker largely by a single component, a compound called Z9 nonacosine. What I wanted to know was whether these workers were responding only to the presence of this compound or whether this fertility signaling compound needs to be in its chemical background in order to be properly interpreted. To test for this, I use this setup where workers were put into restraints and presented with an anesthetized ant as a stimulus. I recorded whether or not the workers reacted with the submissive response of retracting their antennae or did nothing and just antenated the stimulus ant. What I found is that when workers are presented with a queen who is displaying the fertility signal within a chemical background similar to the worker's own, they recognize it as a queen. When they are presented with a queen who has a fertility signal within a dissimilar chemical background, they don't recognize it as a queen. And then when workers are presented with just the fertility signal without any chemical background, they also don't recognize it as a queen. However, worker ants don't just react submissively to queens. When a queen is present in a colony, workers also refrain from laying eggs. As soon as a queen dies or leaves the colony, the workers will start to lay eggs. So, maybe a chemical background isn't necessary for inhibiting worker reproduction. To test for this, I set up groups of workers in nests without queens and put single chemicals on small pieces of glass inside the nest. The groups either receive the fertility signaling compound, a similar non-fertility signaling compound, or just pieces of glass without any chemicals at all. Regardless of the treatment, the results were the same. All groups of workers laid eggs at the same time. Both of these experiments demonstrate that signals need a background and that chemical context makes a queen. A fertility signal without a background was just a chemical to the ants, not a queen. So why is this research important? There are tens of thousands of species of ants all around the world. And each one of their societies is built on separating a queen from a worker. Figuring out how the ants actually do this, how they separate a queen from a worker, is like decoding a language that's fundamental to the success of literally millions and millions of societies all around the world. I think that's a task worth doing. 